We're here to do a soul search with Alicia Garza of the Black Lives Matter movement. She's a woman with distinctive style and a distinctive voice. I always see you introduced as Alicia Garza, one of the co-founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. Tell me the story of the first time you used the hashtag Black Lives Matter. Well, I actually wrote a love letter to black people in 2013 after George Zimmerman was acquitted in the murder of Trayvon Martin. And I wrote it in response to a lot of the things that I was seeing on Facebook, which were people's responses and reactions mm -hmm. to the acquittal. And it was two lines of thought, right? So one line was all my social justice homies who basically were like, we know the criminal justice system is corrupt and rotten. And so if you expected any other outcome, too bad for you. Well, I wouldn't say that to Trayvon's mother, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thread was all of this language around how this was a tragedy, but that what we then needed to do was be more respectable for white America even though George Zimmerman wasn't white. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to vote. That's why we need to pull our pants up. That's why our kids need to get better educations. That's why our kids shouldn't be wearing hoodies. All of these things, blaming black people for systems and dynamics that we didn't create. So that love letter was really like, we good. Mm -hmm. And actually what's not good are these systems <laughs> that we're being held accountable to, right? At the end of that letter, I said, black people, I love you. I love us. We matter, our lives matter. Black lives matter and my sister Patrice put a hashtag in front of it. And then my sister Opal, you know, reached out and said, we need to build this. This is resonating with me. It's resonating with a lot of people. One of the most memorable movements that you led was after the death of Michael Brown. Can you talk a little bit about that night? We decided to do an action in solidarity after Darren Wilson was not indicted in the murder of Michael Brown. Together with 13 other people, we shut down a major transit system. Did so by chaining ourselves to each other and the train for four hours uh, in commemoration of how long Mike Brown's body lay in the street in front of his mother's home. Do you remember what shoes you were wearing the night you shut down the train after the death of Michael Brown? <laughs> I was wearing sneaker wedges. You wore heels Absolutely. to shut down the train. Absolutely. See, this is my this is what I mean <laughs> is that there is there is no contradiction with fabulous you shoes know? and serious social justice yeah. work. Yeah. I heard you publicly mm -hmm. say that you voted for Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. in the California primary. I did. So now that we're in the generals, mm -hmm. it's gonna be Trump or Clinton. Mm -hmm. Will you support Clinton? Publicly? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You know, I think one of the things that I have been struggling with this electoral cycle, not only are our choices not great, and not the like idyllic great, but like really not great. Mm -hmm. In my state, demographics are changing rapidly. Uh, in my state, we do have to have honest conversations about inequality. We have to have honest conversations about race. And neither candidate is doing that. When I think about the Clintons, and the Clinton dynasty. I lived through the Clinton years. Incarceration through the roof, right? The demonization of poor black women, the unraveling of the social safety net on the backs of black women, even though white women actually took advantage of government assistance and welfare programs more so than black women. Black women were deemed as the Cadillac driving, hair and rollers, bonbon eating, got eight kids. And I know sometimes people give a lot of criticism, like that was her husband's policies. And I'm like, no, 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 she wasn't like sipping tea. She was also campaigning with him on those policies. If Donald Trump is elected, what do you think happens to the movement for black lives then? Hopefully what happens is that it gets stronger and it starts to get more strategic. Here's my, my last question. If Donald Trump wins the American presidency, what shoes are you gonna wear for the inauguration? <laughs> Running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> our job is to keep our communities engaged and keep our communities mobilized and participating. And the running shoes will really be for, we gotta get it moving. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do to change the way our democracy functions? How are we gonna be fighting back under a Trump presidency? 
And then who are we going to be running to take power? Thank you so much for soul searching with me today mm -hmm. and for sharing your insights and your ideas and just for being everything about who you are. Oh, thank you so much thank for you. having me. Alicia Garza. Thank you.